So this is a very different setup than normal. I'm usually out and about, uh, tripping around looking for compositions out in the field with my uh, backpack on. But uh, I, I did do that uh, just a couple of days ago. I went down to Berwick One Tweed and it was a beautiful day. It, one of the few days this week where it actually hadn't rain or didn't rain and it wasn't snowing. So I thought, great, let's get out of the, the confines of the office setup and head out and take some photographs. Now, I've named this vlog Disaster Vlog. <laughs> and you can probably see where I'm going. This isn't, it's not clickbait. It depends how you kind of you categorize disaster. Uh, no equipment got damaged. It wasn't an absolute horror story, but the disaster part of it was I really enjoyed doing the vlog. I will show you some of the vlog. I'm not just going to talk to camera for the whole duration of this video, but it's a more of a pre-warning because it is an absolute disaster. So I got to the North uh, Berwick Pontoon, Tweed, sorry. It was, as I said, a beautiful day. I had a place to myself. The sun was setting. Everything was looking fantastic. So I just started my vlog. And I thought, and this is the kind of disaster point, usually when I know things aren't going well in a vlog, I'm on site. I'm at location, I think, ah, this is just not working out. There's no compositions I can find, the light's terrible. Uh, some other problems could arise. A whole raft of things could happen. But you usually know when you're on location. I was blissfully unaware, thinking this vlog was going fantastic. Chatting to camera, not interrupted, not too many things going on. As I said, I had the place to myself. Um, and the the light was great, the images in the back of the camera were great, everyone was looking fine. Done and dusted, left the place, headed back home, uploaded the pictures. Fine, pictures are great, happy with the pictures, happy with the images I got. Uh, it was just such good light, it was a, a different location, so it was all kind of new, it was all, it all just it, it fitted together. But then it came to loading up the film footage <laughs> of the vlog. And, well just let me try, to, I'll, I'll show you something, I've got a new toy. This is the gimbal I got, DJI Osmo Mobile 3. Great wee thing, absolutely fantastic. Folds up, I can actually fit it in my pocket, my jacket, it's that good. It's that uh, compact. So yeah, gimbal. The reason behind getting this um, just a bit of a backstory is that I have tried to try my, my hardest to reduce the amount of equipment I carry. Now, you see my previous vlogs, I shall link them over here. That was, they were done in, in Bangkok and New Zealand. And the last thing I wanted to do when I was traveling around was to have a lot of gear. So I opted, took a bit of a risk, but I opted to do everything on, as in vlogging, on my phone. This is why I got this phone, it's the iPhone 11 Pro. It's got great cameras in it, uh, records at fork, all that kind of good stuff. And this is why I got it, just to, to save myself constantly having a big camera with me, when really this will be you know, more than sufficient in a lot of circumstances. But I wanted to try vlogging with this, okay? I didn't take that, I didn't have that whilst I went to New Zealand, I thought, it worked, the footage was fine, I was happy with the footage that um, the iPhone produced, so I'm just going to go down that route of using my iPhone for a vlogging camera now. I did have the Canon EOS M6, which is a great little camera, but it's just, it's another camera, and then lens, or you know, more than one lens, to go onto that to do various things. And I've also, you've probably noticed in my previous vlogs, I've moved away from Canon, I'm now using the A7, Sony A7 III, uh, again, weight-wise, the Canon I was using, it was a 5D Mark II, so it was showing its age. It was um, it was a workhorse of a camera, but again, it was big. There were certain times where I was panicking about um, memory cards. The, the A7 III has uh, dual memory card slots. It's a smaller form. It's a better camera in general. So I opted for that. So again, smaller, one lens, the 24-105mm to f4. Again, just to cut back on weight. So this is, this is the kind of backstory of going down the route of getting this. Came back from New Zealand, footage was fine, I took on my phone for the vlogging. I thought, great, I'll actually, this will be how I do it from now on. But to make things nice and steady and more smooth, professional, I bought myself a gimbal. I've, I've made certain kind of a, adaptions to it. You can see at the bottom, I've got a little, uh, little horseshoe 
part here that is for the microphone that's currently on the A7 III that I'm recording with at the moment. I had this in place with the microphone, but I wanted to record on the using the rear cameras on the phone because they're better quality cameras. And I'd done a couple of test runs just here, just to see if it would work. And it's fine, it's actually, it's better if you're talking to a lens rather than looking at a screen to see you're in shot and all that kind of thing. And it's, it's wide enough that you're, you're going to be in shot. So as long as you have it in front of you and you can see the lens, the lens can see you, everything's fine. But, and this is the big but, here there's a zoom. <laughs> and I knew this, but for some reason because of the microphone being, it's actually on this side here, I'm holding it back to front because I wanted to get the rear camera. So my hand, every time I pressed record, was pushing the zoom button. <laughs> so the whole vlog is just of one side of my face. <laughs> really, really, really cropped in. So I, that's something, because I was looking at the rear of the camera, I did not know. Even when I was turning it back, I thought, well, it looks a bit tight, but I'm not looking at it and I'm looking at the ground, so I could not tell if that was zoomed in or not. Press stop on the recording, no problem at all. So. There is some footage, usually at the start of the vlog section, that um, is at the right distance and then it slowly creeps forward <laughs> as I press the zoom button. Yeah. Also, which I'm quite surprised at actually, um, that's enough of this. This, Apart from that, when I, was, when I knew what I was doing with this, this worked perfectly. It's a great, great uh, system, great wee bit of kit. What I was quite surprised at was the, the mic I'm using, the Rode mic, it struggled with the wind. And I had a dead cat and everything on it. So not only was it like really crazy close up towards um, to the camera, but half of the audio is is just wind noise. And I'd never experienced that problem with the Rode mic before. Um, I think it's called the Rode mic mini. It's a little one, but it has a, a, the, the dead cat on it, the big fluffy thing to prevent the, the wind noise. Consequently, because of those two things being undetectable whilst on location. I thought everything was going fine, came back really quite excited about this vlog. It was a nice little, little short coastal um, scene to take some shots and when I uploaded everything I was just, yeah, gutted. I did try my hardest to kind of tweak things to make it a wee bit more less close and less windy. <laughs> So that, and that's what you're going to see now. I'm really happy with the images. It was a good experience to go there, a new place. Uh, and it was, it was, some of the shots are fine uh, as in video wise. So yeah, it's, it, 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 it was a bit disappointing, quite a disaster uh, when I loaded those uh, vlog files into the computer and viewed them. Yeah, but you live, you learn. Now I know I'm actually going to change things completely. I am going to film solely on the Filmic, Filmic Pro app, which I have, and I have used in the past as well, it's a great app. But the one complaint about the Filmic Pro, which is a positive for me, is that it renders a lot of the hardware in this unusable, i.e. the zoom. So I can press this zoom accidentally, like I was doing before, and the camera's not gonna then zoom in, it's gonna be a, just the actual, the, f the framing which I, 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 I thought was gonna be happening. So that's a bonus of them actually not talking to each other, the Filmic Pro app and the Osmo 3. Uh, I, I dare say in the future they probably will uh, do an update where the hardware and the, the app will talk to each other, like the, the, the DJ app which I was filming on originally. Um, so that's actually a bonus, I'll use that. There's, there's better um, op options for colour grading because you can really record it quite a flat uh, film style so you can, you can do your whole colour grading with a lot more accuracy post as well. So that should have been the, the app I used. Learning, learning curve, all that stuff. But uh, I think I'd, I'd kind of jumped into too too much new equipment at the, at, at the same time. You know, I'd, I'd made this change moving from the big heavy DSLR Canon 5D Mark II over to the smaller mirrorless Sony a7 III, away from the EOS M6. Canon vlog to just my phone. All these things are fine. I know how to work my phone. I know how to work the, the Sony to some extent. Yes, the menu system, as everyone knows, is really quite a, a challenge. It's a bit of a labyrinth, but you can do as much prep work as you can beforehand and um, before you leave to this the, to go to location. 
This, on the other hand, I should have given myself a lot more time. <laughs> so, apologies for what you're about to see. Hope you like the images. I appreciate you'll probably <laughs> be uh, at a loss for words with the, the vlogging um, quality. But that's what I'm saying here. It's You live, you learn. Appreciate the fact that once you get new equipment, instead of rushing out to use it in the right setting, take the time to learn things um, and see what possible problems could arise with the way you're, you're doing things. So, here's the video. Hope you like the images. Berwick upon Tweed at sunset. Here we go. It's finally stopped snowing. It's stopped raining. The wind has calmed down so I can come out with the camera and uh, actually do take some photos. I've been stuck inside, which has been quite good because I've actually uh, spent a bit of time um, doing quite a bit of stuff to the website and just uploading photos to various other websites and things like that. So it's been it's, it's been a worthwhile kind of stay at home, batting down the hatches kind of uh, period of time. But yeah, I'm currently in Berwick upon Tweed. Uh, just really for one shot, there's a, a kind of breakwater, and at the end of the breakwater, there is um, a, I think it's a lighthouse. There's a, a marker anyway. It doesn't look. It looks kind of like a lighthouse, but it doesn't seem to have a lamp on the top of it. So I'm going to head along there. Uh, it's nice blue sky. It's um, it's kind of mid to late afternoon, uh, so hopefully got the kind of setting sun which you'll probably see behind me. And um, but I'm not too sure what to how to make this image. Uh, you know, it's not so much different, but what I'm going to use, I'm going to do long exposure. I'm just going to make the most of the, the, the setting sun, or I'm going to let that sun do the job of illuminating the the kind of harbour wall. I think, I think this is the way. Seems to be getting closer anyway. So. Um, I actually thought I was walking through someone's back garden, but it was it is the official way down. It just wasn't very it wasn't a signpost at all actually. It's a nice bit of choppiness to the water, so I think I might go for the old long exposure. No surprise. Um seem to be doing a lot a lot of those at the moment. Uh, I just don't like water, choppy water, it's messy, it's, it takes away from the image. I like quite a clean image. And um you no, know, there's a field. I'm not having much joy here. We'll just have a walk along the pier itself and see if I can actually get down to the other side. Well, I'm going to call it a day. We kind of lost the light. Uh, I got a wee bit of wet standing in the surf. Um, yeah, the tide comes in pretty quickly here. It's, uh, some of the waves come in and they're, they're a good distance off. Then the next wave comes in and it's yeah, you don't have time to move. So it was good. I got some nice shots. Did a lot of different shots there. Long exposures with the waves. Some sh quick exposures just when the light was catching the tip of the wave as well. So, yeah, we'll see how they come out. I actually put it on continuous mode as well and just went crazy on it, um, just to catch all the various stages of the waves. But they're still kicking off now, but the light, as I said, the light has dipped. So, uh, it's still actually quite nice in the sky. I might, I might take some more shots, but they're certainly not catching, the light's certainly not catching the waves. That was really nice when that was uh, just, just hitting the, the tip of the waves as they were, as they were pressing. So. <laughs> 